Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the Krebs cycle. Now this is something you have to learn and uh, there's a funny joke that the real Krebs cycle is learn Krebs cycle, forget Krebs cycle, learn Krebs cycle, forget Krebs cycle. Hopefully you'll be able to learn it from this video. Hi everyone. Okay, so we're on to stage three of respiration, which is the Krebs cycle. We've looked at glycolysis and we've looked at the link reaction and now we're on to the Krebs cycle. It was discovered by Hans Krebs in 1937 initially and then he worked on it for a few years and eventually he won the Nobel Prize in 1953 which he shared for his discovery of the citric acid cycle. It's called the citric acid cycle and not the Krebs cycle sometimes because it actually involves citric acid which is one of the first kind of stages in the cycle and ultimately what the cycle does is it regenerates the citric acid back to the start molecule, a four carbon molecule, which is needed to start the process off again. So it's very similar, obviously, to when we looked at the Calvin cycle, we've got a cycle, we've got something being regenerated at the end. And ultimately, the point of this is not to produce uh, lots of ATP, but to produce a lot of reduced coenzymes that we're going to then send to the electron transport chain, and they will end up helping us produce lots of ATP. It takes place in the matrix, as I said, just like um, the link reaction. And it's the, one of the two stages that take place in the matrix. And then the last stage we're going to look at in the next video will take place in the actual membrane itself. OK, so here is the first stage of our Krebs cycle. So the molecule that we're going to need to combine with our acetyl-CoA, which has come from the link reaction, is called OAA or oxaloacetate and it has four carbons. Then we obviously have our acetyl-CoA, which came from the link reaction, and we're gonna add them together. So they combine together to make this compound called citrate, which is six carbons. As we've mentioned, citrate, or citric acid as it's sometimes known, is what this cycle is then named after. So in the first stage, we're going to decarboxylate, and remember that means remove carbon dioxide. And so we go from six carbons down to a five carbon molecule. It also gets oxidized, similar to what we just saw in the link reaction. So the oxidation means that we're going to remove some electrons and some hydrogen ions. And then that is going to be passed. Those hydrogen ions and electrons are going to be passed to NAD. And so we're going to form some reduced NAD. Remember, it can be written as NADH plus H plus, but all of those variations. But let's just stick with making reduced NAD. Dehydrogenase enzymes do this, and then obviously the NAD is the coenzyme of this reaction. So the dehydrogenase enzymes are removing the hydrogen and electrons, and then the coenzyme is NAD, and therefore it's accepting the, um, the hydrogen ions and the electrons, and therefore it's being reduced. So we've now got a five carbon compound because we've removed one carbon dioxide already. We're going to do the same thing again. So we've got a five carbon compound, we're going to remove another carbon dioxide, and we're going to oxidize it again. And it's exactly the same process. We are going to remove some hydrogen ions and electrons, and therefore we're going to reduce NAD again. Remember, this can be called oxidative decarboxylation in the same way that it was in the link reaction. And now I haven't labeled these, so we've got five carbons and four carbons here. We don't need to know the intermediate names of these molecules. We just need to know we go from a six to a five to a four carbon molecule. So we've got citrate and then these two, we don't need to know what they're called. OK, so now we can see the whole cycle. We've done the first two parts. So we've done two lots of decarboxylation and um, oxidation, and we've made two carbon dioxides and two reduced NADs. So now we are going to just make some more um, reduced coenzymes and we're going to get back our four carbon molecules going to regenerate back to our oxaloacetate, which is what we had at the beginning to combine with our acetyl-CoA. So this last stage is just the regeneration stage. We're just regenerating that molecule. So we are going to do some more oxidizing and we're also going to do some substrate level phosphorylation to make a little bit of ATP. So that's what's going on here. And then we're going to do, again, some oxidation and it ends up reducing another NAD. And then this is the first time we've seen our other coenzyme FAD. So again, very similar. We're going to do another oxidation and it's going to produce it, those um, hydrogens and electrons that are being removed from our molecule are going to 
be accepted by the FAD, so it becomes reduced FAD. Now there's no decarboxylation in this stage, so we're staying four carbons and it's just producing another four carbon molecule. We've just done some oxidation and we've done some dephosphorylation, and that has allowed us to produce a couple of reduced coenzymes and a molecule of ATP. So all of these processes you'll see, we took acetyl-CoA and we took citrate and we take it all the way back round to oxaloacetate. We regenerate it at the end so that we can do the cycle again. And once the um, acetate group is detached from the coenzyme A at the start, the CoA will go back to the link reaction. So the coenzyme A will return to the link reaction and then we will have another acetate being brought, which will then combine with the oxaloacetate and the, to make citrate and off we go again. So this is just about regenerating, like going through a process of taking a molecule, and regenerating it back round to get the molecule needed at the start. But that process produces a lot of those reduced coenzymes. OK, so like the link reaction where we have two molecules of um, pyruvate, which means it happens twice. This is the same thing. So because we have two molecules of pyruvate, we get two molecules of acetyl-CoA. And so therefore the Krebs cycle is going to have to turn twice per glucose molecule. So let's see what we get from that. We get per glucose, four carbon dioxides, which as we've said are a waste product, so they're going to diffuse out, two reduced FADs, which go to the electron transport chain, six reduced NADs, which go to the electron transport chain, and two lots of ATP, which can provide energy for whatever's happening um, nearby. So we are producing a little bit of ATP, but realistically, we've managed to produce eight coenzyme, reduced coenzymes which are going to take those hydrogen ions and electrons to the electron transport chain. So that means that we can make more ATP using that oxidative phosphorylation, which we're going to look at in the next video. So the main things to remember here is the stages that happen in the cycle, what gets produced at the end. Remember that we're just, the acetyl-CoA is just kind of bringing the, the coenzyme A is bringing the acetyl group to the start of the cycle. The cycle regenerates it back round to make oxaloacetate which you need to start the cycle so it's a, a self-sustaining process and as long as we have the acetyl-CoA arriving then and we don't really need much else we need some ADP to do the phosphorylating and yeah that that's pretty much it and we need the coenzymes there to to help with those enzymes to do those reducing uh, and decarboxylating so that's it um, and so then we'll look at now the last stage of, photo, of respiration sorry in the next video where we take all of those reduced coenzymes to the electron transport chain and we'll look at how we make ATP, which is, spoiler alert, very sim similar to how we make ATP in photosynthesis. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.